Hello everybody, so today we're going to be looking at conformity and we'll be looking at the types and explanations. So I've just put together this slide and I think these are things that you need to know and be able to recognise some specific points in actually exam papers, but just things that you should be able to know and pick out uh, if you see them and also be able to use in your answers. So first of all, what do we actually mean by social influence? You need to know what that means. What is meant by conformity? And we'll look through a definition. You need to know the difference between types and explanations. And this is something that students do get confused about. So hopefully I'll be able to give you some indication as to how to remember those. And now, this next bullet point is something that I picked out of an exam question where students got quite confused about it, what it was actually asking. And this can come up anywhere. This is a generic point. So if you are asked about psychological research in any question, it wants you to talk about the findings of research, not uh, anything else, not the procedure. It wants the findings. And then this also the next point this was something that actually tricked a lot of students in an exam question. So if you're asked about why people conform, it wants you to talk about normative and informational social influence, not the main studies like Zimbardo, Ash and Milgram. That is not what it's looking for. And plus, anyway, Milgram's talking about obedience. So we don't want that at all. It's conformity this and why. And they were these two different explanations which we will go into and also I have mentioned five evaluation points in this presentation so I recommend using the title in your textbook for each evaluation point because I do really think that it triggers the rest of the information if that's something that you do struggle with so I've just included a definition of what conformity is. So this is a change in a person's behaviour as a result of real or imagined pressure from a person or group of people. So if you look at the photo that I've attached below, this image suggests that the group is together and that that group potentially is putting pressure onto that individual on the left hand side or it might be that that individual imagines that the pressure is coming from that group. So types of conformity were put forward by Kelman in 1958 and there are three of these. So these are internalisation, identification and compliance. Now the way I remember these are that types is a short word and internalisation, identification and compliance are all on their own. There's no other words that follow those types. Whereas explanations for conformity explanations itself is a longer word and so more words come after each of the explanations so informational social influence because explanations is a longer word there must be something that comes after so that's how I distinguish between the two things so first of all on the types internalization now this is where you agree with something a particular viewpoint in public and private so you genuinely believe that particular thing and that's permanent it doesn't change identification is where you value a group and then there might be some part of you that identifies with that group so there's a public and a private agreement so it might be that you're at university and everybody there eats vegetarian food and you value that group because you're you yourself you sort of think yeah it's a, I think I should follow that as well so you go along with that when you're at university and then when you come home you're, you're not a vegetarian you just eat whatever's given to you so but you still would publicly agree and privately agree that vegetarian food is potentially better in the sense that it's not eating animals so that's how you identify yourself with a group you value being part of a group because there's something good about it and you associate yourself with it and then you've got compliance so this is a temporary thing so this is where you publicly will agree with something potentially because you want to fit in 
but privately you don't actually believe whatever people are talking about you just say oh yeah yeah definitely when really you don't mean that at all you don't think the same as other people okay so now we have the explanations for conformity these were put forward by Dutch and Gerard in 1955. He said there was a two process theory and these are two main reasons as to why people conform. So the first one is informational social influence and this is the need to be right. So this I remember this because information is generally correct. It is normally right and therefore this explanation means that you want to be right so in times of crisis or in a new situation you will look to somebody who seems to have more knowledge than you and you will follow that and so then you internalize that as the way to act in that new situation so that's one explanation and then the second one is normative social influence and this is the need to be liked so this is where you conform in a way that you think others will approve and also accept you. So this is public compliance. You comply, so you publicly agree, but privately you may think differently. Now I'll take you through five different evaluation points that you can use. So one of the strengths that we have from the explanations is that there is research support for informational social influence. So this is the idea that we want to be right and this is a strength. So the blue bit underneath is where I have written up a paragraph. So what I tend to do is make points from the textbook first and then I put it into a, a P paragraph, a point evidence explanation, link back as well to what I'm saying by saying therefore this shows or therefore this is supporting uh, and so this case Lucas what happens is that participants have easy and hard maths questions and when the questions are hard there is greater conformity to wrong answers than there are when there are easy ones and this is because when questions are easier people feel more confident and they'll go with what they genuinely think and this was true for people who rated their maths ability as poor so they were people who were more likely to doubt themselves but when the questions were hard they went along with other people and then they were wrong because they went along with the wrong answers there was a greater consensus over the wrong answer and so what happens is people will conform when they don't know the answer or they feel like they don't know the answer. And below this is how I've typed it up. So one advantage of informational social influence is there is research to support it as an explanation for conformity. For example, Lucas et al gave participants easy and hard maths questions, finding that when the questions were harder, participants conformed to wrong answers more so if they rated their maths ability as poor. This suggests that people conform when they feel they don't know the answer as they look to others and assume they are right. This supporting research evidence therefore increases the validity of informational social influence as an explanation for conformity. Now we have a limitation. So we've got individual differences in normative social influence. So this is the need to be liked. So I've just put a question there. Do some people want to be liked more? So we're saying that normative social influence is the need to be liked, but actually there's these things called N affiliators and they have a greater need for being liked. Just think of the people around you. Do you see that some people want to be liked more so than others? So what McGee and Stephen found was that actually students higher in affiliation were more likely to conform. So therefore there are these individual differences which this explanation doesn't necessarily take into account. So what I've done there is just put the sentence starters at the bottom so you can have a practice at writing that one up yourselves. And now I've got informational social influence and normative social influence work together. Now this is a bit of a limitation because Deutsch and Gerard were saying that there is a two process theory. 
but actually do they work separately? So when we look at the ASH experiment, it may be that the dissenter reduces normative social influence because they're providing social support, or it could be that they're reducing informational social influence because there's an alternative source of information. So they might be right. So maybe we could follow them instead. It might be that they're working together because we don't know in that situation which one it is. So we're unsure. Now, because that was also done in a lab, we can also critique that study in itself and say, well, it's less like everyday life. We're not in labs in every day. So therefore, it's got low ecological validity. It is not very reflective because we might not act the same when we're in a lab. And therefore, it's very doubtful of them as separate processes. They, you can say that they work together because we've just got an example there of ash where this applies. Another limitation is that there are individual differences in informational social influence. So it's not actually a valid for everyone. Ash found that students were less conformist compared to others. So 28% of students conformed, whereas other people, there were 37%. Well, that's a difference in itself of information social influence, which is the need to be right. So that's, that's different. Maybe students um, go on more of their own independence as opposed to others who will think, I need to go with the group. But then Perrin and Spencer found actually very little conformity. So there was only one person out of 396 trials that actually conformed. And so therefore people are varying in their need to perceive reality accurately. So we all, well, hopefully most people want to be right, but maybe some people will conform more so than others because they think that that's right, whereas others think that that's right. And we have this difference in how we are perceiving our surroundings and what's around us. We do have research support for normative social influence, so the need to be liked. And then the ASH study found that many participants answered wrong because others did. So ASH asked his participants afterwards, why did you why? Why were you going along with what was blatantly the wrong answer? And then people said that they were afraid of disapproval from the other participants in the study. So what Ash did, he repeated his study and instead of asking them to say out loud which line they thought was matching the standard, they wrote them down and conformity fell massively to 12.5% instead of 36.8%. So in private, it had gone down because they probably thought that the paper wasn't going to get then read out. But then again, you could argue participants may have thought that the answers were going to be read up still why it was at 12.5 percent. And overall, this is actually a strength because it shows that normative social influence is a valid explanation for at least some conformity behaviour. I've now attached an application essay, which you might like to have a go at. This is going to include AO1, AO2 and AO3. So Steph and Jeff are student teachers who recently joined other members of staff on a one day strike. When asked why they decided to do so, Steph replied, I never thought I would strike, but I listened to the other teachers arguments and now I have become quite passionate about it. Jeff's explanation was different. To be honest, everyone else seemed to be striking and I didn't want to be the only one who wasn't. So the question is, discuss explanations for conformity. Refer to Steph and Jeff as part of your discussion. 12 marks. So I've highlighted the bits that I would pick out for AO2. When we look at this question, discuss, that means outline and, ex and evaluate. And so we want to be looking for AO1 and AO3. I have put the breakdown at the top, but it says refer to Steph and Jeff. That means you must mention them in your answer. So I've just highlighted my AO1 in yellow, my AO2 in green and my AO3 in blue. This is the first paragraph. 
So one explanation for conformity is normative social influence. This explanation states that a person conforms to the group based on the desire to be liked. A person conforms because they think others will approve and accept them. Hence, it is more an emotional and cognitive process. With normative social influence, people comply. Jeff shows normative social influence as he wants to be liked by the group. This is because everyone else seemed to be striking and he didn't want to be the only one who wasn't. Jeff's desire to be liked is shown by his private views, but publicly he complies to be liked by the group. The way in which Jeff conforms normative social influence has research support conducted by Schultz et al. Now, I didn't mention Schultz in my other five points, but this is mentioned in the textbook and I maybe find this one a bit easier to remember. So. It might be that this one you include in your evaluation also. So the aim of this study was to see whether using a door hanger informing guests at a hotel about washing their hands, stating that 75% of their guests reuse their towels each day, would make them do the same. This resulted in guests reducing the need for fresh towels by 25% as they felt like they wanted to fit in with the hotel staff. This is a supporting study that shows the change in behaviour to fit in with the group and be liked, just like Jeff did with behaving like the majority. Overall, this supporting research increases the validity of normative social influence as an explanation of conformity. And the second paragraph is another explanation for conformity is informational social influence. This explanation states that a person goes along slash agrees with the group based on their desire to be right. An individual doesn't just comply, but also changes their own view about a situation. Informational social influence is also where someone looks to others as to how they should behave in a social situation, so they change their behaviour to be correct, hence being right. Steph shows informational social influence as she hasn't just complied to a behaviour, but also listening to others has changed her own viewpoint. This is because Steph never thought she would strike, but she listened to other teachers' arguments and now she has become quite passionate about it. The fact that she genuinely believes what other teachers are saying means that she has conformed to believe the same as others. As this is a genuine belief, she publicly and privately agrees with the group known as internalisation genuinely accepting the group norms. Supporting evidence for informational social influence has been conducted. This being Asher's variation where he found that as task difficulty increases, so does the amount of conformity. This showed that when participants were unsure about which answer was correct, they conformed for informational reasons like Steph, who wants to be right and so follows the group, as the change in her view conforms to the group changing her views publicly and privately, which increases the validity of the informational explanation for conformity. So those two paragraphs would get you the 12 marks. What I've done is clearly split down into AO1, AO2 and AO3. And by doing that, it does really help the examiner to know which part is which as opposed to mixing it up. So I think that's quite a structured way to do it. I'd like to just thank you for listening and do have a go, have a practice at writing those evaluation paragraphs and really have a go at flashcarding those different types of conformity and explanations. I do find that the online website does really help for quizzing your knowledge uh, with the 10 questions and also the evaluation extras don't do this in your textbook but where they question at the bottom where the two smaller AO3s are if you click on those they give you more information on the site uh, which does better enable your understanding also. Thank you and good luck with all your revision.